Welcome to the sports cast. If you haven't yet, please subscribe on all our channels, uh, YouTube and iTunes. And if you're in iTunes, please leave a rating and a review. It will help us out tremendously. And visit us on thesportscast.net, thesportscast.net for the latest and greatest. This episode is brought to you by Insta Bible app. You could uh, you, you you could get the Insta Bible app on the iOS app store. And today we have a special t- show today, and uh, and my co-host uh, Mr. Justin Riley. Welcome to the Sportscast. Glad to be here. Glad to be here uh, talking some sports. We definitely need it right now, and excited to be talking about uh, football. Before we introduce your um, introduce our guest. Uh, what's going on with Alabama? I, I've heard there was uh, three players tested positive for coronavirus. Oh uh, well, don't know a whole lot of uh, detail other than was what was released earlier. Five players actually have been tested positive for the coronavirus. Uh, they didn't give any names or any specifics, um, but um, they're going to do their best to control the situation and quarantine the players. And then get them back on the road to health, but nothing to be really, I guess, fearful of just yet. But um, that, that's what's going on so far. Yeah, yesterday, uh, three players from Oklahoma State University were tested positive, and now today, Alabama. So we'll see how, uh, how these big schools will handle the situation, but I'm sure uh, they got the protocols ready. And, of course, they'll probably have to quarantine for at least two weeks or at most two weeks. Justin, uh, I would like to uh, for you to introduce our special guest and uh, what is he all about? Absolutely, man. I am glad to do this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a uh, great opportunity today to speak with uh, one of the all-time greats from the University of Alabama, as well as one of the best to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, he was a 1989 first-team All-American. 1989 first team all sec player 1989 defensive player of the year 1989 iron bowl mvp he was the number four overall pick in the 1990 nfl draft and one of the most prestigious prestigious awards was i had his poster on my wall my alabama wall at my house growing up um, that is none other than uh keith mccants welcome to the show brother hey thank you very much man that was a great introduction uh that, that was awesome Keith, hey, I'm glad to be here, man. Glad to be with you guys. Keith, thanks for coming on. Uh, all SEC player. Uh, Keith, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you start your life? Well, I'm growing up from Orange Grove Projects, man, in Mobile, Alabama, the small town and um, in the state of Alabama. Actually, not that small. The second, it was the second largest state city in, 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 in the state of Alabama. And um, started off as a basketball player, actually. Love basketball. End up playing basketball and um throughout throughout the years and stuff that I was I was really big for my age. I always played with older guys and they made me a lot better, a lot faster, a lot stronger. And I kinda stood out. And uh went 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 so I playing football. And it is just and it took off from there from um from Little League. Yeah. Speaking about and, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask real quick. I heard there's a story about you in eighth grade during summer league about playing basketball, and you got caught the attention of a Murphy coach. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, this is this is what got me. Going. I was going to school, to school Blunt because I love basketball, and Blunt was a basketball school. And then this guy named Johnny Moffitt. Johnny Moffitt was a fast, talented kid. He got caught up in some trouble. But anyway, um, I was just doing playing summer league basketball. When I was in eighth grade. And we have playing with high school, high school guys. And we was out there playing and stuff, and I shattered a backboard. And I ran out the gym, thought I was in trouble, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm for kids, I, I didn't know no better. So I ran out the gym, jumped in the car, and went home. And uh, so the basketball the, the, the basketball coach was also the defensive coach for the, for, the, for the Boston football team. And he said, who was that guy? Who was that kid? Then uh, he came to my door and knocked on the door, and um, and his, his her mom came to the door. She didn't know I was playing sports, and he said, "Well, ma'am, uh, Keith broke our backboard." She said, "Backboard? What are you talking about?" She went into sports, and she said, "No, my baby and him." I saw working when I was in, in, when I was eleven years old. So she said, "No, he just doing work and go to school. He ain't playing on no basketball," and she didn't know I was playing. I had to hide my <laughs> trophies in my closet, so. <laughs> and he said, well, wait, he had, he had some of the backboard in his hand. 
He said, yeah. He said, well, how much is this going to cost me? I said, man, that bag boy cost about $10,000. And they break away. They just came out with him. He said, $10,000? I ain't got no $10,000. He said, oh, he can come to Murphy High School. But he said, Keith, come here. I guess he'll be going to Murphy High School. <laughs> yeah. Keith, uh, George Hawkum. Go ahead. Go, uh, uh, go ahead, Keith. George Hawkum. So he, he, passed, he passed away a couple of years, man. One of the best coaches I ever, ever, ever had. And um, taught me, out, taught me out, so, so much about the game of football. And he just just let me just let me do my thing on the field. Keith, uh, he's a great. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, so so sorry to interrupt you twice. Go ahead. Sorry, finish that thought. I'm like, go ahead. Go ahead. I got a lot of stories, man. So, I, yeah, uh, I was doing some research, and uh, before we head into uh, football, you had a relationship with Charles Barkley. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, on my recruiting trip, Tennessee and um, Auburn. And a couple other schools will allow me to play both sports because they know I had a passion for basketball. So they allowed Charles Barkley to do a little recruiting and talk to me while I was there. And um, Pat Dye assured me that I'd be able to play both sports, you know, basketball and football. Got a chance to talk to Bo Jackson a little bit. And um, he was a two-sport guy, one of the best two-sports guys that ever played the game. And uh, that, was, that was very impressive. And uh, we was out there playing around and stuff like that. And and Charles Barkley was telling me how, how great Auburn was and stuff like that. And uh, Bo Jackson got a chance to run into him a couple of times. And um, Lawyer Tillman was like, uh, from Mobile, Alabama. Of course, he was my um, ch- chaperone. And uh, I, it was a great experience, man. Well, I, I got to ask something. I heard a rumor that you were a Tennessee fan at one point. Is that true? I was a big-time Tennessee fan. They oh, cut the out of majors. Yes, sir. Yeah. Powerful names there. So, you know, uh, rest, rest in peace, uh, Coach Majors. Well, what but led you to you Alabama? I'll tell, you why, I'll tell you why I was a Tennessee fan. We had this guy named Charles Kimbrough. He played. He played. He was, That's why I wore number 84 because he wore 84. And he was my idol. And he went to Tennessee. And also, the, uh, Reggie White was there as, as, as well. And I, I went up there and visited with Tennessee, and I got a chance to meet all these guys, man, and watch them play. And I was a big Tennessee fan, you know what I'm saying, from, from, from being my idol. And I was just thinking, I talked to um, Willie Anderson, and he was a Keith McCann fan, and I did an interview with him. I got a little radio show here in, 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 in St. Petersburg. And I didn't know that he wanted to come to the University of Alabama because of me. I can I can relate to that because I wanted to go to Tennessee because of Charles Kimball. <laughs> well, yeah, which which back then Tennessee was definitely a big time college school. Um, Keith, can you tell us your uh, recruitment experience that led you to Alabama? Oh man, yeah. Um, one of the greatest men I had. I I met. I got a chance to meet Paul Bell Bryant, and he told me that I was what. He heard about me and my talent, and that uh, he'll be glad to see me when I come to Alabama. When he told me that, it was all over with. And the great uh, Brian know about Keith McCants. Wow. So that's how that that's that that's what that's what happened with that. It was over with. It was done. And but um, how many mm-hmm. schools were looking at you? Uh, like how many schools um um out there that had every, expressed interest? Every school in the country. Wow. Every school in the country. I saw receiving that junior colleges, four years colleges, um, the uh, uh, West Point, AR was looking at me. Who was your and, close um, second? Was like, who was what? Who was your close second? The close second was, I would have to say, Tennessee. Right. I would have to say Tennessee. Well, obviously Alabama was your choice, and of course, coming there at your position, you know you're stepping into a line of uh, some pretty big names like Derek Thomas and Cornelius Bennett. But with yeah. you, <laughs> uh, with you, there really wasn't like a learning curve at all. You just dominated right out of the gate. So I kind of got to ask, I guess, how did you escape their shadow and become the next big thing in that position? Well, okay, okay. William Fuller was was a recruiter. Had the area of Mobile, Alabama. He recruited me uh, for for a long time. 
because uh, I was, they were looking at me because I was just a freshman in high school. And William Fuller, Fuller and then I think it was William Fuller or Wade Perkins, one of them said, nah, he said, don't you want to be the great next, the next great Cornelius Bennett? I said, no, I want to be the first chief of a great chief of camps. And he started <laughs> laughing and said, this guy, him. So we went to the gym and stuff. I was up there on the, 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 the I couldn't play my first year. So we all went to the gym and stuff. We playing basketball. But me, Connie's been at Bobby Humphrey. You talking about, I know, seen so many times in my life. These guys, was they, they, they just like me. And then, like, we went out there, man, and I jumped up, man, and the ball came over three and jumped up there and put it back down, sky rise over everybody. they like, wow, man, we can't, we can't wait to get him on the field. He got to be something special. And um, that was that, that was that was a great experience, man. We're playing, playing basketball. He, any guy that was going to play, I was saying a football player was, was a heck of a basketball player. And um, I, I got a chance also to practice with the with Wim Sanders with the basketball team. And, Oh wow! To stay, to stay, to stay in shape and stuff like that. So I kind of, I kind of really enjoyed Georgia, Georgia University, Alabama. One of the best, the best years of my life, man. How was your experience with Alabama back then? Uh, was it like a uh, 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 very championship-minded type of, of uh, uh, I mean, a uh, championship type of like um, organization back then, just at, um, um, as it is right now? Like, how was the ambience? Yeah, as long as you were in Alabama, you was expected to win. Right. And um, that, 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 that's, we had a winning attitude. We had winning championship. We practiced for perfection. We know it was perfect, but we practiced for perfection. And we took that, that mentality on the field. And people that are that went to the University of Alabama and played played there, even when, when we when – we, the success that, that we instilled from the, from, from the football field – carry on in life in our in our life journeys. Yeah, very and similar answer. Fall, yeah. yeah. And even if you fall, we learn how to get back up. The the, the most important play or the most important game is the next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is Absolutely. a very similar answer uh, to uh, when we spoke with George Teach, you know, Alabama had that championship yes. caliber mentality. Uh uh right Justin? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, year after year, you know, like you said, Keith. I mean, you're expected to win and win now. And, and if you want to win, you want to you want to be successful and stuff like that. You go to the University of Alabama, and that's why they so they have so much great depth on 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 the, on the bench, is because you have you you got second and third strings that's capable of playing first string, mm-hmm. and then it's just so the talent is so loaded at the University of Alabama, and that gets credit to Nick Saban because. That comes from recruiting and the performance on the field from the young men that they're, that they're play, playing now, and um and and it, it carries on and that opened up a, a thing in the NFL where it's just like um a lot of NFL players, I mean scouts teams respect and look forward to to, to the you know University of Alabama players. We you think Nick Saban is the greatest coach of Alabama? Uh, I mean, of all time. Yeah, I have to say yes, man. He's one of the greatest coaches ever, 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 ever college coaches ever um, that, that, that ever lived. That Brian, in, in his time, he was the greatest. And now in this Nick Saban time, he is the greatest. And I'll tell you what the head coach's job is. The head coach's job is not just to the, 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 the teach winning techniques of football, but win a winning attitude that's carried through life. And he, he, he motivates players to play better than what they are, and he motivates coaches to coach better than what they are. He's a great motivator. And that's and, and that's what we to win, win championships. Absolutely. You know, after just, you know, two years at Alabama, you, you dominated. And you were actually regarded as arguably the, the best player in college football and projected to go no, number one overall in the 1990 NFL draft. What made you feel like at that point, you know, being in – just a junior, there was time for you to go. Well, well, I'm saying if I knew what I knew, I would have stayed. But the thing is that you go to college to earn the money for your family and have a, have a, have a, a, a decent living in life. The thing is that I was already hurt. I already had a bad leg, and and I probably wouldn't have got my chance to to to, to, to enter the NFL. There's just one player away, um, like Proto. You know what I'm saying? That right. guy was 
He's a he's he is a college. He, I mean, he, 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 he was an NFL bound. Just one play away from 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 running his dream. You know, you have over six hundred thousand college football players that play that's playing college out there, and you're trying to get in. You're trying. You're trying to. You 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 want to be the best part of the best of the best, and that's in the National Football League, and that's where the best are the best. My first my my, my first my first practice out there was um they paid me sticking on Bobby Humphrey. Bobby Humphrey came out and for a pass play out. I, I went one way, he went the other way. He said, "Welcome to the SEC McCants. I was good, <laughs> but I went that good. Well, Bobby was definitely and, special. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what that and then then at the University of Alabama, the caliber of players that you have, it's it's it's, it's, it's some of the best that you'll see. You know what I'm saying? You think these some of the guys on the practice team in Alabama are better than some of the guys in the National Football League. Keith, um uh you mentioned something about you wish you stayed longer. Why do you say that? Well, come when I got drafted to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It became. It was, it, it, I, I didn't realize what kind of business it was. Ray Perkins held me out as long as he can to um to to, to let my knee heal healed up because but I have I have a degenerative bone disease and it was on deteriorate. Although I had a five year seven million dollar contract, they only knew that I saw it with the and chair on it for three years, and that was part of my problem because um that moved the defensive end, which caused me uh to be kind of, kind of in contact with. Offensive lineman, almost every play, and when I do that, this is just a, referring to a linebacker, middle linebacker. I'm able to go sideline to sideline and keep those guys off of me, and I make it make right. contact, and um and they, 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 making contact every play, and then got and after that, you know, you got a weakness, they they attack your weakness, and then that's then that's what they did. So now. I'm playing defensive end, really playing out of position because of the speed that I had. I should have stayed a middle linebacker. And um and it's that it it, it, it kind of people kind of ran or they double teamed me or something like that. And they kinda of, kinda of, they was getting frustrated because at Alabama I was there all of my life I was used to making plays all over the field. Now mm-hmm. I'm on one side and I'm being isolated or double right. triple team. And it deals in. Some people call me a bus, but with the seasons I had, the, the NFL knew I wasn't no bus. Absolutely. So, and, it's you know, like, and then, then I'm the business part of it. I became addicted to drugs opiates because I end up taking, taking so many pain pills and drinking alcohol on top of it just to go out there and play and taking shots, quarters on shots and stuff like that. And when when they told me that I was an you know, addict, I was, uh, I was addicted to just pain pills, I didn't know what that was. I was like, I ain't addicted to nothing. But I then realized I had to have that stuff. They gave I, I think 183 pills a week just to play. And when I left the lead, it kind of pushed me to the curb. And the NFL was like, not for long, because you don't stay enough for long. And I wrote a book called My Duck Side of the NFL by Keith McCants. And I talk about the things, not to bash the NFL, because there's a lifelong dream for a lot of kids out there, but to educate you or what would you do to get to the NFL, and what are you willing to do to stay in the NFL? Just like the steroid thing. You playing against the best of the best, you need every edge you can get. Well, it's it's, 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 it's consequences for those. And, I, and, I, and I, paid a, I paid a hell of a consequence for, for, the, for the drugs I was taking. Which we'll leave and that link that, of the book below in our description. Go ahead, Keith. Sorry. And and, 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 and that's why I, I do the things I do now. I, the radio gig is 8, 8 a.m., I am Tampa, Florida, 8.20 a.m. I am Tampa, Florida. I mean, St. Petersburg in Tampa, Florida. And I, and I, every time I get to town, I mention it. And because of the coronavirus, I haven't had a book tour. I had to uh, kind of shut it down. But as soon as I get a chance, I'm going around the country to, 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 to push the book and educate people about um, the, the, the techniques of, of hitting people and playing hurt, playing injured, and taking medications. And you uh, teamed up with your friend, Robert Blackman. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that relationship and I guess yeah. what made this book really come together? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Robert, I, I, I met Robert. I got arrested for something and, and here in Tampa, and Robert reached out to me. I think he was, uh, he was at Florida State with uh, O.J. Simpson's son, Justin. They were roommates. And he reached out to me, and then he just said he wanted to help this guy. 
And when he did, it's like I, I want I want to see. I, 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 you see all the headlines about Keith McCann's. I never robbed, steal, cheat, lie, manipulated, did none of the things that was taken. That was taken. Because at that time, that's all I could afford. And Robert came and I said, I want to share some of the story. He's like, Well, I can help you. I can help you try to get the story out there. And we team, man, we saw he helped me get on a 30 for 30 broke and and uh, uh, Vice Sports and, 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 and we did so many interviews and um and and we really took off and I started telling my side of the story and the more I talked about my story, the more people came and started and uh more people at the NFL start. I got the same problem. And so right. I'm uncovering some of the things that, that, that actually happened. So I found out that I, I knew I wasn't the only one. But one of the right. reasons why I wanted to do it is because when a good friend of mine took his life, a junior sale, mm-hmm. Jeff Arm, Bob Dutrez, Andre Waters, Tom McHale, I was also keeping cancer. I tried to take my life because my live, losing the ability to live life on life's terms, I had 18 concussions. I lived on the street for two years. You know, the guy was scammed with me. I didn't even know it. Didn't know who I was. I was on drugs and the depression and, and suicidal, homicidal. And I wrote this book and 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 and, 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 and because not just for people, but the players who don't have a voice. And it's right. a great book. And I and, and it, it's just a super book. I'm not ashamed about what I've been through because right. all that don't kill you will uh, make you stronger. And but I'm gonna tell you something. I got a testimony that's just one way. I can't wait to get out there and start telling that. Keith, uh, can you tell us about your testimony of how you found Christ? Well, I got arrested for pimping and slips and prostitutes in, in Mobile, Alabama, and it was solely un- un- untrue. I was mad at the time because I got a divorce. So I'm in the cell. I wasn't mad at this police because they put that that that, that, that room out and it went through with worldwide news. I took a belt. I hung myself, and um, somehow the belt broke or something. I don't know what happened. I, was, uh, I, I don't know. But when I came to him, I was sitting up, and the guy was patting me down and stuff like that. It was all right. Yeah. So I said, I got a 357. I'm going to go home. I'm just going to end it. That God, if you real, give me a sign. Show me anything. Give me something. You know what I'm saying? That, was, that happened on a Friday. I was going to went to the Celebrate Recovery on a Monday. And... um. I went to the church, saw signing autographs, taking pictures, uh, right there in uh, West Mobile, uh, Mobile, Alabama. And this guy came up to me. And he said, tell me, Mr. Camp, you owe me a hug. I said, okay. I think he's just a regular old Alabama fan. And um, he said that when he came up to hug me, he held me kind of tight. God bless you. And I said, I thought, I thought, I thought he was maybe a little gay or something, which I ain't got no problem with that. And, and he said, I'm going to tell you. I said, don't I know you from somewhere? He said, no, you've never seen me before in my life. He said, but I know you. And I'm going to tell you where I know you from. You hung yourself in prison jail. And I took, just, I prayed to God that you may live. And you rose up like a spirit was in you. When he told me that I hit my hands and knees and said, from this day forward, I will serve you. But all my heart. And that's when my life started to change, brother. Amen. True wow. story. Amen. That's a, that's a story. Time, like, wow. And um, God is real. Amen. The Spirit is real. And um, God touched me in a way and started storming my brain because I could, I didn't know who Keith McCann's was. I was eating at the garbage can, taking showers and gas station. I had those six hundred thousand in the bank, and I had a uh, eight hundred thousand dollar rent, a half million dollar condo, and I didn't, I didn't even know it. I had went through a divorce, so I was had a nervous breakdown. So, yeah, man, God is real. I'm gonna tell you, about the love of money is the root of all evil. Money destroyed everything around me. I love. I know you got to have it to live, and that's the biggest addiction out of the drug addiction. Money is the biggest addiction in the world. It hit every level of life, and everybody, everybody that need it, everybody need it, and um, and everybody, and everybody try to get it on every level of life. Amen, Keith. Uh, wow, that's a that's a powerful testimony, and I 
Um, I, and I pray that people that listen to it will definitely, you know, will be inspired by it. Uh, we're we're winding down just a bit on the show. Um, Keith, who who playing against or playing with? Who was the greatest player that you've ever played with or against? Oh man, that's 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 that's, that's awesome. Well, the only one guy ever scored a touchdown and won a game against him. His name was Jerry Rice. You yeah, know. Um, one of the, that that guy, I had the speed, but that guy just do one just jerk, and I'm gonna tell you something. He and, him, and I can't leave my buddy out, although he's my friend, Emmy Smith. Emmy Smith is uh, one of the smartest runners I ever seen in my life. He runs right off the car, right off of his block of the then he'll find a break, and you're never gonna get a good shot on it. And then and I got that name one more, Barry Sanders. Mm, the guy wow. is unbelievable. The old stuff I got played, played against. One of the guys I played with was awesome. Wow. Warren Moon. Mm-hmm. Jeff Joyner. Hmm. And just John. And 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 um uh Ernest Given, hey with Jeffrey Webster saw the, the best second uh sort of wide receiver core I ever seen in my life. These guys were true professionals that knew how to practice and knew how to bring it to the game. It was one game from the Super Bowl when I played for the Houston Oilers. I was the, these guys, one of the best coaches I ever had, the late Buddy Ryan. Mm. He no was doubt. something special. No doubt. Buddy Ryan was something special, man. I said, he was one that can come in there and motivate and motivate you. He didn't say much, but when he did, you listened. And now, uh, when you when you listen, he can he can get he can get a team fired up. He actually, uh, I heard stories that he actually considered you to be like his third son. You are that close. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were, man. We were. Buddy Ryan actually tried to get me coming out of college. I did this story. Um, God bless his soul. Al Davis, when I came out of college, Al Davis told me to check into a mental institution so I can fall in the draft. I never heard of stuff like that. That's how powerful the NFL is.